Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible, and we're going to read Jeremiah chapter 5. Fifth chapter of the Jeremiah series, Commentary. Verse 1, Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof. If, if, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. And though they say, The Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Return to where? Return to the Lord. They refused. Verse 4. Therefore I said, Surely these are poor. Are we talking about Monetary, money, or are we talking spiritually? Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. And why is that? Why are they foolish? Why don't they know the way of the Lord, nor his judgment? Why? Because they neglected the scriptures. It really irks me to know that great men like William Tyndale died at the stake, was burned alive for the sin of translating the Bible into English. Oh yeah, and you know who killed him? The organized church. Yeah. And one of his dying words was, Lord, open the eyes of the King of England. And not too long thereafter, James, the king, authorized what is called the King James Bible. Well, he didn't call it that, but we call it that. But he called, they called it the authorized version because it was authorized by the king to be read commonly in churches. Oh, yeah. So why did they not know? They neglected the scriptures. Verse 5. I will get me unto the great men and I will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. You know what, people? America today and the West, I mean Europe and the UK, all the rest of them, they don't know the way of the Lord. They don't know the judgment of the Lord. I mean, all they'd have to do is read the scriptures and say, oh, that's why we're all in the mess we're in today. But they won't do it. They're too busy. Well, you know, look at the internet. You know what the top two things on the internet are? Gambling and porn. Porn and gambling. I, I don't know which order, but I know those are the top two things. Gambling and porn. Porn and gambling. I mean, really. 
Uh, you know, they don't know the judgment of the Lord. Verse 5. I will get me unto the great men, and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord, and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke, and burst the bonds. See, the law was supposed to be kind of like a yoke to and bonds to keep you from going into a place where you don't want to go. Really. Lord wants to keep you out of trouble. Verse 6. Wherefore a lion, a lion out of the forest shall slay them. And a wolf of the evenings shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces. Because their transgressions are many, and their backslidings are increased. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me, and sworn by them that are no gods. When I have fed them to the full, then they commit adultery, and assemble themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. Houses of the whores, right? They were as fed horses in the morning, and everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I know a lot of guys that have been guilty of that. You know, they say the grass is always greener, right? So everybody wanted their neighbor's wife. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Go ye up upon her walls and destroy, but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword, which is the war, neither shall we see sword nor famine. Ooh, you know, if if in if the past Bible prophecy of the Old Testament is any indication of the future, Europe, America, and the UK will see war and famine. Verse 13. And the prophets shall become wind. And the word is not in them. What word? The word of the Lord. And the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. That doesn't sound very nice, does it? Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandeth what they say. Huh. 
You know, when I used to live in Miami, Florida, there was an ancient people from the island of Cuba. And they spoke a language that I didn't know. And I didn't understand what they were saying. You know, I traveled through LA and guess what? There were, and this was in the mid nineties, mid or late nineties. Um, uh, there were more Spanish radio stations than English. A nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandeth what they say. Huh. I wonder if an ancient nation, if what happened in the past would happen again in the future, I wonder if China will fulfill this as a second prophecy in the future. I don't know. That's just kind of Bob's theory. Verse 16. Their quiver is as an open sepulcher. That's an open grave, people. They are all mighty men, and they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up thy flocks and thine herds. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fenced cities, wherein thou trustest with the sword. Oh yeah, these foreigners are going to come in and they're going to eat up all your food. They're going to take away your, your living. Nevertheless, in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end with you. And it shall come to pass when ye shall say, Wherefore doth the Lord our God all these things unto us? In other words, why is all these bad things happening to us? That's the Bob translation. Then shalt thou answer them. Likewise, as ye have forsaken me, the Lord, likewise as ye have forsaken me and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. No, they're not blind, and they're not deaf. Well, spiritually, yes, but physically, no. Verse 22, Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Verse 24. Neither say they in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. Uh, you know, pick up the newspaper. 
Really? Pick up the newspaper. The headlines. You know, in times past, is it any different than today? I honestly doubt the people of Judah back in the days of Jeremiah were any worse than the people of the West today, Europe, UK, the USSA. I doubt it. I doubt it. So, verse 25, your iniquities, your wickedness, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not judge. Yep, sounds like the same today. Somebody that's a, a widow or an orphan or somebody that's poor. They always seem to rule in the rich's favor. Verse 29. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. False prophets. You want to see some false prophets? Turn on TVN or the 700 Club, whatever is more your style. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Oh, yeah. What are you going to do in the day of the Lord's visitation? What are you going to do? Now, Isaiah chapter 30, we're going to read it. It's along the same lines. Um, according to some of the research that I had read, Isaiah and Jeremiah did not live at the same time. Isaiah lived prior to Jeremiah. And I believe Isaiah was speaking to mostly Israel, the northern kingdom. But, you know, there were parallels with Judah and Israel. So let's read Isaiah 30 as a parallel verse for Jeremiah 5, verse 1. Isaiah 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to to sin. Well, you know, in the Garden of Eden, what, when Adam and Eve sinned, what did they use for a covering? An apron of fig leaves. They didn't have God's covering. No, they... Fig leaves. Verse 2. That walk to go down into Egypt... And have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh 
and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Uh, the Bible, to my knowledge, the Bible does not say not one good thing about Egypt. Nothing. You ever heard of the Egyptian Book of the Dead? Uh, I have. And no, it has nothing to do with the Bible. Absolutely nothing. Verse 3. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be and help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from whence came, from whence come the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent. A fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches beyond the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain, and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. That's right, people. Lord's not telling you to go down to Egypt. Egyptians aren't going to help you. Sit still. Verse 8. Go now and write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come, forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Oh yeah, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Uh, now you know why I say this is like a companion to Jeremiah. Uh, which say to the seers. Now a seer is just an Old Testament name for a prophet. It was the original name of a prophet. And they called them seers because they could see the future. Which... So this is the people saying, which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Ever heard that song? Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Yeah. That's what they want. They don't want to hear God's truth. Tell us what we want to hear. God loves everybody. And God made you that way. If you're a sinner, it's because God made you that way. You can't help yourself. Oh, yeah. Don't tell us the right way of the Lord. We don't want to hear that. Tell us smooth things, you know. Prophesy deceits. Prophesy lies. Verse 11. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Uh, what did the Lord say about a path? Uh, what about the path? Well... How about Matthew chapter 7, verse 13? Jesus speaking. Enter ye in, uh, I'm sorry. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 
because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Lots and lots of them. Back to Isaiah 30 and verse 11. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. We don't want, we don't want to have to listen to God's word. Uh-uh. Get that out of here. We don't, no. Verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shard to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. But ye said, No, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee, and... We will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, and as an ensign on a hill. And therefore will, will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee, at the voice of thy cry, when he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, and when ye, when ye turn to the left, ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver, and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. In other words, get that thing out of here. Then shall he give the rain of thy seed, that thou shalt sow the ground withal, and the bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous. In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise, and the young asses, and the young asses that ear the ground shall eat clean provender, which hath been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. And there shall be upon every high mountain 
and upon every high hill, rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire, and his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck, to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity. And there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. Uh, you put a bridle in, um, you know, like a bit into the mouth of a horse, and then you pull the reins to the left or to the right, you know, and you can guide the horse in the direction that you want it to go. Well, that's what they're talking about here. They're going to put a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. Verse 29. Ye shall have a song as in the night, when a holy solem solemnity, oh boy, that's a mouthful, is kept, and gladness of heart, as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the Holy One of Israel. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall show the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger, and with the flame of a devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and hailstones. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod. Now remember, it was the Assyrian Empire that came in and took northern Israel into captivity. And they took a large portion of Judah also. They tried to take Jerusalem, but uh, the Lord's angel killed 185,000 of their troops, of their soldiers. That's a fairly, that's a substantial army. Let me tell you what. So, verse 32. So, I mean, yeah, verse 31. For though the voice of the Lord, sh for through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod. Yeah, the voice of the Lord killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. Verse 32. And in every place where the grounded staff shall pass, which the Lord shall lay upon him, it shall be with tabrets and harps, and in battles of shaking will he fight with it. For Topheth is ordained of old, yea, for the king it is prepared. He hath made it deep and large, the pile thereof is fire and much wood, the breath of the Lord like a stream of brimstone doth kindle it. So what is Topheth? Well, according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, Noah Webster, uh, he was a believer and a linguist, which is a language scholar. Guy knew Latin, guy knew Hebrew, Old Testament language. He knew Greek, the New Testament language. He knew over 20 different languages fluently. This guy could go to Europe almost anywhere and converse with them. And most Europeans know two or three languages. 
Americans are lucky if they know one. But Topheth is a noun. Hebrew. It means a drum. Hell. So called from a place east of Jerusalem where children were burnt to Moloch. The false god, right? They were child human sacrifice. Burned alive. Where children were burnt to Moloch and where drums were used to drown their cries. Can you imagine that? I wonder if our abortion clinics are really that much different. I don't know. <sighs> so, all right, well, that's the end of Jeremiah chapter 5 and Isaiah chapter 30, which uh, don't quite go together, but, you know, similar theme. And honestly, I just, you know, I read the, the news and I don't see a lot of difference between Israel and Judah of old and what's going on today. My father, who uh, was a World War II combat veteran, told me that when he was a child, they didn't have much use for lawyers. You know, if you had a business deal, you just shook hands, and that was it. You know, they didn't make up these lengthy contracts. You know, you just shook hands and said, okay, I'll pay you this. You give me that, I'll pay you this, or I'll, we'll do this, and I, you do that. And that was it. A man's word was his bond, and people kept their word. Women wore hair coverings. They had long skirts. There was no such thing as a thong bikini. Um, the so dumb ites stayed in the closet. There was no Church of Satan. Things have really changed since the... Um, since the 40s. My father was 16 years old when the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor and uh, lied about his age to get into the military, into the army. And of course, back then, the, you know, the army wasn't asking too many questions. So, but yeah, he used to tell me uh, that's how things were. But you know what? He really wasn't, he wasn't a believer. Well, I kind of wonder because he had a Bible that he got after he got out of the military and he kept it in the uh, dresser drawer by the bed. I don't think he ever read it, but he kept it. And... Uh, What I find interesting, well, one of the things I got, uh, he didn't exactly tell me the way that I'm going to explain it to you, but people knew more about baseball than they did about the Bible. You know, it was baseball. I mean, it was just a baseball craze back in them days. You know, it was America's pastime. So people were going to ball games and neglecting uh, the Bible. And then they wonder why World War II happened. Well, I know why World War II happened. I know why the Dust Bowl. Look that up, the Dust Bowl. There was no rain. Look up why the Great Depression of 1929, the stock market crash. God was sending a wake-up call. But America kept hitting the snooze button. 
The alarm was going off, but they kept hitting the snooze button. And instead of repenting and getting better, they got worse. Compared to what America was like in the 40s, we're a bunch of heretics. And I'm going to do, Lord willing, of course, a Bible study on 1964. That's when this country really started to go down the toilet. We had a president that was assassinated. They took the silver out of the coins. Uh, that was around the time that the, um, the pill started. And it was around the time that uh, just drugs and everything else. Vietnam War. The spiritual state of this country after, oh, in 1964, they took prayer and Bible reading in Jesus' name out of public schools, which where it, it had been for over 200 years. Can you imagine that? I was in first grade and remember having Bible reading and prayer in Jesus' name in public school. And then a bunch of men in black skirts dared to call themselves the Supreme Court and said, oh, we can't have that. That would be, that's, you know, we got to have the separation of church and state. Well, if they really believe that, why are we sending money to a, uh, a religious country over in the Middle East that's not Christian? I think you all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the Arabs either. Yeah, how come nobody complains? Well, you know, you can't give them money. That's a separation of church and state. Or is that uh, the sin of Gog and Magog? Well, you get the drift. No, that only applies to Christians. Separation of church and state only applies to Christians. And I will guarantee you, they're not enforcing these uh, quarantine type restrictions on the mosque I will guarantee you I will guarantee you they're not enforcing those restrictions so alright everybody um, all blessings praise glory and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.